Welcome to Alchemical Science. I'm Jordan, an open source researcher who investigates science that's either usually very old, very new, or very esoteric. In this video, um, part three of decoding vortex-based mathematics, uh, I'm going to show you how to draw the toroid we'll need to fit our Mod 9 Roden number maps within during the next part in the Decoding VBM series. So we're going to look at a couple different methods for doing this, drawing it from scratch using just a compass and a straight edge, or alternatively, how to take a shortcut using a protractor and a compass. And then I'm also going to share the PSD file we made up so that you can print it out if you don't feel like practicing your sacred geometry, geometry skills at all. And this is a preliminary step to my next video uh, in which we'll apply the number maps to the toroid form itself. All right, so we can start by finding approximately the center of the page. The end construct will be reasonably big, so we just need to make sure it's gonna fit on the paper. And then just draw our first circle. And then find approximately the top of your circle and match up the lead with the point of where your compass was last and draw in your second circle. Oops. And so we've got our Vesica Pisces there. So now we just need to go around from the new points we've created and draw in more circles until we get the seed of life. So there we have our seed of life. And then we're just gonna continue around again and make up the flower of life from that. And so now we've got two points where we can check each time on, and I, I probably won't, but you can to make sure it's going to be precise, but just go around. I go around in a clockwise fashion, but just methodically. And draw in all your new circles. All right, so there you have it, the flower of life. And so now we're just going to adjust our compass so that we can draw a circle to encase our flower of life. All right, so we can match it up at the bottom there, the corners, and at the top, we're not too bad there. Just go for it. Just marginally off, but anyway, that's fine. All right, so then we just want to take a straight edge ruler and we're going to draw a line right through the center using all of these points to be able to line up our ruler. All right, and we'll draw that straight through the center. Not too bad. And then we've just got to put in a few more lines um, which we with which we're gonna mark out our nine points around the circle evenly spaced. So from the center here, we need to draw in two lines. I'll do it from this side actually. One on the other side. And then we wanna do a, another line uh, that's lined up with these four points here. One, two, three, four over here. And then we need to draw in two last lines just from these two points up to these points here. So again, I might do this from this side just so I can see without the shadow. And they will line up with these two points here as well. Well, mine's maybe slightly, slightly off, but pretty close. And one over here. And 
And so here we've got nine points, actually 10 points because of this one, but it doesn't count at the moment. And so we're just gonna go and mark out each of those points with our pencil, because in the next step, we're going to erase most of what we've done. So we just wanna make sure that they survive that and create a point there for us to work with later. All right, so now we can take our eraser and erase all of this. Just leaving the outside circle and the points we've marked on it. All right, so now we've erased all of what we did inside here and we're just left with the circle and the points around it so we can draw in our nonogram. So if we start with this top point here, and then we just pivot our ruler to this central bottom, uh, you know, uh, the point to the left of the central bottom point here. And then we can draw in our first line. And then we just take the other side of that. From our top point again here. We can draw in a second line, which creates this triangle here arrow and then we just take our ruler and we can go around again methodically just like so and draw in the nonogram And then we have our first nonogram. So then from here, we need to create more points. So we're gonna take uh, some of the points here and bisect them. So just taking the first point here and then the first kind of opening of this arrow you see here and lining up those, for those two points, we're gonna draw a line straight through there. And that creates another point in between these here. So then we just go around each of these and do exactly the same thing again. All right, so then we've marked out 18 even points around our circle now. So we've got to take this a little further and we're going to essentially draw another nonogram in uh, using these points as a reference so that we have 36 points. So if we, easiest way to do this is to take this bottom one here and just do this inverse. So we take this point and this point and draw a line in there and then take this point and this point and keep going around doing the same thing there So you can see we've still got 18 points here, but next we're going to bisect these points again to create our 36 points. Damn. All right, I badly erased that mistake and we'll do that again. So we need to intersect. So we're taking, you know, if we take the bottom and the top, uh, we simply go one over, not like I did just then. 
and we're taking these two points here and drawing a straight line through and we'll see that that intersects these points here. So we just go right around our circle again. Doing that, I'll do it from this side so it's a bit more visible. Okay, so now you can see we've got 36 points evenly spaced around the circle. So if we just take our pencil again and we want to mark out each of those points quite accurately and clearly, because then we're going to rob all of this out again. All right, with those drawn in, we're going to erase all of this. That's a terrible eraser. Okay, so next we want to just size our compass to this outer circle here. Yep, looks like mine's there. And so then we're going to take each point that we've created and our central point here and draw in another circle. And I mean, you can see my points aren't exact here. And so this is where you'll really be able to check your accuracy on all of the other points. So if you were accurate, then all of these should line up and I'm sure mine won't be perfect. And it's not. And so this is our finished toroid monograph there, which we can then apply our VBM number map to. But I'm just gonna quickly show you a, another way. All right, so our second method is just using a protractor. And so we take the protractor, mark out the center point again, and then mark out every 10 degrees around the outside of the circle. And so I won't do all of that but then we take our compass again in the same way we did with the last one. Make sure that's lining up with the center point there. And then we can just draw in our toroid in exactly the same way using this method. And so on. And if you can't be bothered doing any of that, you can just take this digital file that we've made up here and print it off and start using it however you want. And in the next video, we're just gonna show how to apply the number, the number map um, to this toroid that we've created. In the next part of the video, part five, I'll explain how we can fit the numbers from the 2D number maps we constructed in part two uh, into this toroid diagram. Then we will have finished fully constructing what Marco likes to call the inestimable sunflower hologram toroid map manufacturing blueprint construction diagram for the novel flux thruster atom pulsar from the base mathematics and geometry. I hope everyone's getting something out of this series on vortex based maths. It may all seem a little abstract so far, but I'm hoping that once we've caught up on the fundamentals, it's gonna make it a lot easier to run VBM through its paces in terms of considerations of its actual applications. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next part in the series on decoding vortex-based maths and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.